So you remember I said that I genuinely enjoy difficult things? I think I've taken it a bit too far this time. For the past few months, I've been fighting against these entities. I don't know what a lot of them do, but I know that they want me dead and they want to infect me and make me a part of them. I spent a great deal of time trying to figure out how I can survive against this. In other words, many, many deaths. also known as the flesh that hates. He's the mastermind behind it all. He infects land and also releases these entities. His one goal is to take over the world and make every single living creature just like him. And he will do whatever it takes. Now at first he may seem harmless because he's barely doing anything, but later he becomes very, very active infecting land quicker and releasing his soldiers quicker if you do see one of these things and you try to take it out please proceed with caution so the plan is simple i have to make sure the flesh that hates does not achieve his goal of taking over the world and not allow myself to die by the hands of him and become a part of his army every few days he will become enraged and send a horde towards me this is minecraft 100 days against the flesh that hates Hey, this video took a really, really long time to make, and it's totally not by me being bad at the game. So I think you should, you know, click subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Personally, I think you will like the video, so you should just, you know, go ahead and leave a like already. That's just me, though. I really do appreciate it. Hope to continue to make more. Enjoy the video. Okay, where it all begins. I spawn next to the biome that I want to be in. It's like a rocky mountain, but it has a lot of iron that spawns on the surface. But before I can get as much iron as I need, I have to get away from this area and go as far as I possibly can, as quickly as I can, because the incubator will spawn and the incubator spawns at least 200 meters away from me. The incubator being the SCP. And when it spawns, it lets out this roar. Now, I assume that I've made it far enough so I go back to the area that I was in before and I look for sheep. Once I found the sheep, I made a crafting table and made my tools. I can't kill the incubator right now because I'm just too weak. If I try to, I'm going to die. But the incubator does have phases and as it goes up inside of phases, it infects land quicker and also release fleshlings quicker. I don't know what it, I don't know what exactly they're called, but we're just going to call them fleshlings. So I go up, I get me enough stone to make a stone pickaxe. But while I was getting stone, I spotted another sheep. So I have two sheep and all I need is one more. Luckily, looking for the other sheep, it wasn't difficult. I, I found the other sheep pretty quickly. It was pretty much at the destination that I needed to be in. They had quite a bit of sheep, but I only took one of them. I made my stone pickaxe and I made me a sleeping bag. I need this sleeping bag because there's no possible way that I'm going to survive that night. It's just not happening. So this will make things a little bit easier for me. Now that I have exactly what I need, I can get as much coal as I need and as much iron as I need. So I pretty much spend this entire day getting iron and I don't have to worry about the incubator catching up to me because it infects land at a really really slow rate so i just got iron until it was about to be dark made my furnace i cooked a little bit of food put my iron in there made me an iron pickaxe and then right before bed i got just a little bit more iron as soon as i woke up i started collecting iron and the reason why we need so much iron is because tools armor and fences like barbed wires and stuff like just all that stuff was so much iron being needed i found another portal i had a golden apple that was pretty much the only acknowledgeable thing oh right and a golden block so later on i made me a full set of armor except for a headpiece i didn't feel like waiting for enough iron to make a headpiece so instead i just made a bucket the reason why we need this bucket is so we can collect lava that lava will be the only safe way to take out the incubator for now i collect some more iron and then i grab the lava from the broken nether portal once i got the lava i was ready to look for a village i need a village so i can get fortune 
And the reason why I want fortune is so I can have an easier time getting diamonds. It'll make things move a lot quicker. Me wearing iron armor is basically like wearing paper. I can still get obliterated really, really easily. Diamond, however, is basically the new iron. So I see a body of water or a river and I decide to make me a boat. I don't really go that far, to be honest, but I honestly don't like swimming too slow and I'm just too lazy. So I, I, yeah, I'd just rather ride a boat over. I always keep a boat on me. Now I searched for quite a while. Like I, I was, I was searching for a village for a bit. Did not see any village in sight. Just just trees by the time i found another body of water it was already nighttime so instead of sleeping i just row my boat luckily not too long after i do find a village i didn't feel like dealing with the mobs so i just ignored them and went into a hut and went to bed so in the morning of day three I wanted to clean out the zombies that was inside the village. That way they don't infect the other villagers. I was kind of struggling with that though because I only had a wooden axe. A creeper came out of nowhere and I used that creeper to take out two of the zombies. The other two I just had to handle with my pickaxe. I thought to myself that I should probably make a shield by now. I don't know why I haven't made a shield. So I made me a quick shield. After getting a bit of food, I put my iron inside the furnace. Now I need leather so I can make a lectern. Finding cows wasn't really difficult. I found cows really, really easily. But I also need sugar cane in order to make, you know, the paper that I need for these books. I could use the tree bark method, but I genuinely hate using the tree bark method. I, it's just so much work and I'd prefer to use sugar cane. But the problem is I, I barely found any sugar cane. I could not find any. I was searching for a while, man like a fat minute and I, I genuinely just didn't find any. After a great deal of searching though, I finally found some sugar cane, but it was only three. Really? Like, come on, man. The sun was setting and I went back into the village. I was only capable of making a singular book. Disappointing, I know. So this time, instead of traveling across the river, trying to find like, you know, sand that's just on the river, I took a different route from the village to see if there was any sugar cane nearby. While traveling, one of the incubators spawned. This time I was able to handle it. It's good to use lava on the incubator because it also burns the infected land. The infected land can grow these spikes and if any mob lands on the spikes or die by the spikes, they become one of the fleshlings. In the morning of day four, I picked up lava and continued looking for sugar cane. I saw this broken nether portal. It had these gold pants that had agility on it. Agility is actually useful. It only increases your movement speed by 0 0.002. But I finally find sugar cane and it was a lot of sugar cane. It was, it was all the sugar cane that I needed. I didn't have to search for sugar cane for multiple days. All was going well. I make it back into the village and I managed to make five books. So I have enough for a lectern now. I started trading with the villager, trying to get fortune at minimum fortune two. I got all kinds of other stuff. They even gave me sharpness four, but it's way too early. I don't need sharpness four. Hell, I even got mending for a really, really cheap price. But again, it's way too early to get that. I don't, I don't need that at all. I pretty much traded with this guy for the entire day. I even got advanced sharpness, which again, it's too early for that. Advanced sharpness is sharpness, but advanced. What? So if a diamond sword with sharpness five goes to 10 attack, advanced sharpness five goes to 13 attack. There you go. I wanted to trade with the villager all night, but I didn't want to risk the village getting wiped out. So instead I went to bed. So up until the middle of day five, I finally got fortune, but it was fortune two. So I need another book. I only have two books. The reason why I need another book is so that I can have one fortune three book and one fortune two book. Fortune two book will go on an iron pickaxe and a fortune three book will go on the diamond pickaxe but i didn't find any cows nearby so instead i remembered that the librarian sells bookshelves so i could just buy a bookshelf break it and i'll have more books 
I don't know why I never thought of that, like in previous runs. So I do the boring task of getting wood, making it into sticks and getting emerald for it. After making the Fletcher sell out, I went to get some more flint and make another fletching table. I really do enjoy that I can just have as much Fletchers as I possibly want. It's like one of the best things possible. It's so convenient, it's amazing, but it was starting to get dark. So in the morning of day six, I get me a brand new Fletcher. Now I have two Fletchers. Do a bit of trading and now I have enough to get my first fortune book. I only need two more now. I wanted me to have yet another fletching table. This way I don't have to worry about anybody selling out. If one sells out, it's fine. I can just move on to the next one. After assigning my third Fletcher, there's a small four. I like it's it's like one of those types of biomes that just spawns inside of a small anyway there was an area with just a bunch of trees big big trees and plenty of wood i went over there to get some wood come back and i have a ton of sticks sadly it was only enough to be able to get one more fortune book now i'm capable of getting fortune three but i need one more i go back to the trees and get some more wood after this back and forth i finally got the third and final fortune book i combine two of the fortune books make it fortune three and then i make a brand new pickaxe because the iron pickaxe that I have is already half used and I apply the new pickaxe with fortune 2. I pick up all of my stuff, my fletching tables and lectern and leave. Now I just need to look for a place to mine. I wanted to keep looking for a place to mine even though it was getting dark but I kind of had to change plans because he spawned. I didn't know where he spawned at. I was kind of confused and scared so I just quickly went to bed. In the morning, I immediately tried to find out where he was. Finding him luckily was not hard at all. He was like right by me. However, I almost had a really, really big accident. That honestly made me jump. I didn't know he was there. So I once again set out to look for a place to mine. I need plenty of iron. Not that many diamonds, but I need a bit of diamonds. I finally find a big body of water. And now all I need is doors because you guessed it, we're gonna do underwater mining. Now, listen, I know I've complained about saying how lame I feel when I do underwater mining, but after the 50 plus deaths that I've had inside this game, trying to beat this, no, okay, no. After scouting around for a bit, I finally find a place that seems pretty deep, but this thing actually went deeper than I honestly thought it would. It took me to like a whole nother area. I had plenty of iron, redstone, stuff that I need. I need redstone, but I don't need that much of redstone. But the best part about all of this is that there was actually some diamonds nearby. There was only two diamonds, but if I got lucky enough with the fortune, it could give me enough diamonds to make a diamond pickaxe. So I was really, really hoping that these two diamonds would give me at least three. That way I can have my diamond pickaxe and have fortune three. Since I got lucky enough and managed to get four diamonds, I kind of no longer need the iron pickaxe, but I'm gonna keep it just to waste durability. I pretty much spent the entire night just getting as much iron as I can and also looking for more diamonds. When I went back to the surface, it was daytime, so it's now day eight. It's getting closer to a horde night, so I kind of want to look for another village. I saw a broken nether portal inside the distance. This broken nether portal caught me off guard. It had a diamond great hammer with unbreaking three. It's cool and all it deals a bit of damage but it's just way too guess. slow so i kind of never use this the diamond hammer also looks weird when you have it in your hand and you're riding the boat before getting into a village i wanted to do just a bit more of underwater mining hopefully getting a bit more diamonds that way i can have diamond armor and let me tell you day eight was a great day because there was just so so many diamonds that I was finding. I got so many diamonds, I easily managed to make a full set of armor. I didn't take my pants off though because I like the way agility feels, so I just kept the gold on for a bit longer. Once my little expedition was over, I pretty much collected over a stack of diamonds in a singular day. Kinda insane to think about. It's time to look for a village. 
but I saw another broken nether portal, and this broken nether portal had an iron weapon with advanced sharpness 4. Now, mind you, if you remember, the Great Hammer has 11 attack. The iron weapon also have 11 attack because of advanced sharpness 4. But I find a village when the sun was about to rise. I tried out the Great Hammer and... Ugh, it's, it's, it's too slow, man. I, I can't use it. It's just not that great of a weapon. It sucks. So it is now day nine and I need mending. I got fire aspect, but fire aspect is good. In fact, it's one of the keys to winning because the flesh that hates is weak to fire. But right now I want mending more. I managed to get mending for really, really cheap, but he spawned and tried to ruin my good time. Now, I'd never mentioned, but there is a point system with the incubator. If you kill the incubator and also burn off infected land, you manage to tone him down and slow down his upgrades. But sometimes you just will not be able to kill him. It will be impossible because it'll be too difficult. Not that he's invincible, just too difficult. I set down my three fletching tables and I do the trades that I need to do. The first thing that I apply mending to is my chest piece. I need more books though, so I have to look for sugar cane. A horde night is really, really close and I do not have time to search around for sugarcane like that. So I'm kind of forced to just use the tree bark method. So on the morning of day 10, I went to go collect wood. There are some cows nearby that I can test my advanced sharpness on and it's really good. I, I like it. I get another mending book and I apply that one to my pants. This is when I saw the difference between regular and agility. I like agility a lot. I thought it was like unnoticeable, but it, it's pretty noticeable. Because I had this iron twin blade, I wanted to have another twin blade. In the previous runs, I was always using a dagger or a katana, but this time I just decided to go with twin blade. I made me a diamond ax, so that way I can chop down trees and not have to keep making iron axes. And I have plenty of diamonds, so why not? I only have one more armor piece that needs mending, and it's the helmet. However, another incubator has spawned. The incubator legit spawns damn near every single day. I go get my lava from the previous incubator that I killed and I put the lava on this one. It already spawned things and started infecting animals, but I am very, very glad that the animals that it infected was inside of fences because if it wasn't, my entire village would have been wiped and I would have never gotten those moving books. And did you see how many hits that thing take? It takes so many. I get the last two mending books that I need. I put it on my helmet and then the other one I put on my pickaxe. Just to be safe, I do want one more mending book and put it on my weapon. It's not as important, but it kind of sort of is with how much fighting I'm gonna be doing. So I made sure to get one more mending book and put that on my twin blade. Now we're set. I couldn't trade anymore at all. Every Fletcher was sold out. None of them were able to sell to me. So I just went to bed. In the morning of day 11, I got yet another mending book to keep on me just in case I found a super rare weapon because I found a super rare weapon inside of one of my runs that I died in. I also decided I do not need the great hammer because I hate it. So I threw that away. I then picked up my things and left. Now for horde nights, I'm only allowed to run away from one horde night and I use the first horde night to run away in. Every single other horde night, I have to lock down and defend myself somehow, some way, but I have to stay inside of that area. That is a rule I made. Alongside with not using bows, I am not allowed to use bows. If I was able to use bows, I feel like I would have survived the first run because I would never get close to anyone at all. So I revoked my access to bows. Pretty much the entirety of day 11 or the rest of day 11, I just traveled across the water 
that was the safest thing that I can do. If I were to be on land, I would die 100%. There is no possible way to survive against them. While riding along the water, I saw this area. I don't know what it is. I think it's the rare mushroom biome, but it also spawns the fleshling things, the stuff that the incubator spawns. It's already dark at night, but because of the rain, it makes it very, very darker. In the middle of the night, an uh, incubator had spawned, and I can't do anything about it, so I just have to let it live. Poor night ended, and I managed to remain unscathed. I found the village, and I decided to stop there, but yet another incubator spawned. He was right in the middle of the village, so he wasn't difficult to find. I didn't struggle too much. The village had a blacksmith and it had diamonds inside of the chest. I don't know how rare that is. I think someone told me before, but I completely forgot. It's day 12, I kidnap a villager. The thing that I want now is protection, either protection four or advanced protection four. There is no way to survive unless you have protection. You're not gonna survive with regular armor. You will get one shot or two tapped really, really easily. Even with advanced protection four, you're still really weak. Uh, advanced protection for three. Yeah, okay. Can I buy? I cannot. Okay. Wait, actually, I can buy that right now. I don't have a book. Never mind. I don't have a book. Come away, please. I'm just gonna go to the top. He gave me advanced protection three, though, for really, really cheap. Now, if I remember correctly, it was in the middle of day 12, so I need to trade with him as soon as I possibly can. Otherwise, I can risk him re rolling. I don't want him to re roll because this is an amazing deal. Advanced protection three is stronger than protection four. But I do the tree bark method because I'm in desperate need right now and I managed to get a single book from him. Now I can guarantee that he will not re-roll and he'll keep that book. Now, since I need advanced protection for, I need to do a lot, a lot of trading. I went to look for sugarcane and I found, I would assume is enough sugarcane for now. While searching for sugarcane, I saw another village. I touched down inside this village and I didn't do anything besides still the blast furnace. I looked around the village to see if there was anything else useful there really wasn't, but it was starting to get dark and I didn't want to travel the water while it was dark. So I, instead I just went to bed. In the morning of day 13, I made it back to the original village. I make some books and then I set down my fletching tables. I, I'm glad that I'm getting all of these trades done at a really, really early early stage because I don't want to be trading the entirety of my 100 days. You know, I don't want to make it. I spent 100 days trading, you know, can't have that. I need some more sugarcane because I'm too low on books. I think I needed a total of eight books, but another incubator had spawned. Seriously? So I need eight books in order to make all of my protection three books into protection four or advanced protection four. I spent the entirety of day 13 just getting logs. I've gained a total of three advanced protection three books. Now, something you may realize is that these things combining them is expensive, at least to me, because 16 cost is a lot and using it is even more. So we're gonna have to be grinding real bad. Day 14, I pretty much just spent this day wood trade, wood trade, wood trade. It's just, I got quite a bit of advanced protection books but using them or combining them or both actually is really, really difficult because I don't have the levels for that. The amount of XP total that I need is absolute insanity, but you gotta do what you gotta do in order to survive. I managed to combine a, yet another advanced protection three book, but he spawned yet again. This guy was spawning really, really close too, which was making my life a lot easier. I didn't have to worry about him just like being so far in a distance, getting lost. In the morning of day 15, I got my last advanced protection three book. Now all I need is advanced sharpness. Now, but there's other enchantments that I need, but the most important one right now is advanced sharpness so I can put it onto my weapon. For this, I wanted to go into the other village because I already used quite a bit of villagers here. Before leaving into the other village, 
I made me a golden apple and then picked up my stuff. I wanted to only spend one day trying to get advanced sharpness five because I still need a lot of iron. That way I can make my base safely. I spent the entirety of day 15 or the rest of day 15 trying to trade and get this enchantment. But to my surprise, they gave me lifesteal for a really, really extremely cheap price. For lifesteal, whatever damage you deal, 10% of that damage will heal you. So the more damage you deal, the more HP you gain back. I tried getting a Fletcher, but he kept trying to trade Emerald for Arrow. To not waste time, I didn't want to go to sleep this night. I wanted to spend the entire night trying to gain as much as I possibly can. I managed to trade with the villager, but I thought I made a big accident. Oh my God, I didn't, I don't have a book. Well, actually I needed that, didn't I? Okay, you know what, this works. I didn't have any books, so I actually needed a bookshelf. And since I even did that, I know for a fact he won't lose that life steal. So now my weapon has life still on it. So I mentioned I didn't want to waste time. There was an iron golem stuck inside of the lake or a, a small body of water. So I, I spent a little bit trying to guide this man out of there. While I was doing that, yet another incubator spawns. This time it's a lot harder to spot because it's in the middle of the night. So I just went to bed that way I can actually see it. Maybe somewhere in here? Found him. I finally spotted him, but he was way out in the distance. After cleaning up as quick as I possibly could, I went back to the village to continue on with my trades. I wanted to have another librarian. That way I can try yet again to get advanced sharpness. I was thinking that I really wanted agility. I was kind of addicted to the feeling of agility. So I didn't know whether or not I wanted to try hard for agility, but it was a feeling that I really, really wanted. While I was trying to get enchantments that I wanted, something strange happened. How did you even get in here anyway? Like, you don't even fit through the door. It's an iron golem inside of a hut. Like, how did he get in there? It was starting to get dark and I actually managed to get it. I got agility. I felt like I was wasting time, but I really wanted it. So I just decided, fuck it, I'll get it. I went back to the area where the incubator was to pick up my lava, just in case another incubator had spawned. Even though the infected land was inside of some lava, there was still a little bit of infected land. So I was trying to pick that up. But while I was doing that, I saw another village that was out inside of the distance. So I already knew where I was gonna be going right after I got my agility i also didn't want to go to sleep this night because i just didn't want to waste time but i finally got my agility so now there is no more gold pants i can actually use my entire diamond armor set now i have no use for this village anymore so i pick up my stuff and then leave to the next village hey guess who decided to spawn yet oh he's right there I think this is the first time that the incubator spawned by me at night, so I wasn't forced to go to sleep. Why isn't it? Are you serious? By the time I made it to the next village, the sun had risen. It is now day 17. So I got started on my trades and the villager ended up giving me this enchant. So now I need is just Advanced sharpness five. Have you to see it? I was about to say, did he just disappear? He did disappear for a second. Why is he disappearing? Ash destroyer five. You know what? I'm taking that. I did not. I never found Ash destroyer when I was inside of my last run. Like. I've never seen it. It's my first time getting Ash Destroyer 5. We had an Ash Destroyer. 
I've gotten like Ash Destroyer 3 or Ash Destroyer 2. And those are like 40 emerald. I'm getting everything really cheap right now. It's just exactly what I want. What Ash Destroyer does is you do extra damage to somebody that's on fire. So you see what I just said, that means I need fire aspect too. So out of all of my runs, this is the very first time that I've gotten Astro Sawyer 5, which you deal a lot more damage if the enemy is on fire. Each level of Astro Destroyer, you deal 20% more damage to the enemy that's on fire. So I get Astro Destroyer, but I don't have the XP that I need to apply it to my weapon. I try to lock away the librarian so I can try to get another librarian and hopefully get sharpness before the Horde Knight, but he kind of performs some voodoo. What? Oh, wow. He... <laughs> okay. Took away the fletching tables, but this guy was still a fletcher. I didn't trade with him. He somehow was a fletcher, but he was a bad fletcher because he was trying to trade emerald for arrows. I don't need that. And I don't know how to reset him either because all the fletching tables are picked up. So instead I just took him out. But I finally managed to get the last XP that I needed and I put Ash Destroyer on my weapon. Now I just need fire aspect or sharpness, advanced sharpness. I spend a bit of the night trying to get some XP, but an incubator had spawned and I have no idea where he is because it was too dark. So I went back to the village to try and sleep so I can be able to see him once the sun rose. This little shit. Okay. Go to bed. In the morning of day 18, I found the incubator. Another incubator that has smoothly gone out. Won't always be smooth, but glad for now that it is. Since it was day 18, I didn't want to risk wasting time trying to get advanced sharpness or fire aspect. So instead, I wanted to go out to another area, look for a place to mine real quick, get iron, and then set up base. Pink sheep. I will let you live because you're pink and pink sheep are apparently rare. Some things doesn't go as planned because I thought to myself, maybe it will be worth the risk. Maybe I can get this fire aspect or advanced sharpness that I'd need in a singular night. But when I entered the village, it was empty. At least the part that I entered in. There was just no villagers around. I didn't see anyone. So I was starting to panic. Like, ah, I'm just wasting time because there's no one here. I checked. I don't know how many huts or buildings, houses, whatever. There was nothing. I didn't even hear the villagers sounds. I didn't hear them speak or anything. It was just dead. So I see that there's still part of the village at the bottom. And here there actually is villagers. And it was a hut where villagers were sleeping in. So I just blocked them in inside of there. I don't have to worry about running around chasing a villager. I've kidnapped the villagers successfully. But instead of this going smoothly and me just trading all night, another incubator spawned. I could not see him in the darkness, so I just slept. I assumed maybe he'll be up top the little mountain that I was on where the other part of the village was, but he wasn't up there. Instead, he was like kind of out in the distance. <laughs> When I took care of that, I went back to the place where I had the villager kidnapped and I spent damn near the entire day of day 19 inside of this building trying to get one of the enchantments that I need. But he did it. He finally gave me something that I need. It was fire aspect one, but fire aspect is typically cheap. So I only needed two of them. Get two of them and I have fire aspect two now. Very good stuff. I make the fire aspect into fire aspect two. I can't add it to my weapon because I don't don't have the XP for it. I left as soon as I possibly could so I can venture out and try to get iron. It wasn't just any regular rain too, it was a thunderstorm. And since there was a little bit of daylight, there were still spawning enemies. And it was also raining, but it wasn't just any normal rain, it was a thunderstorm that was happening. 
and it's already super dark but when it's raining you are quite literally blind so i just slept so i can get rid of the rain so on day 20 i find the spot that i think has a bit of iron i spent a little bit getting iron in one area and when i was trying to look for another area to get iron another incubator had spawned but the issue is i have absolutely no idea where this guy spawned I tried going up top the mountain to see if he spawned inside of a tree or something like that, and I couldn't find him at all. I was just wasting time looking for this guy. There was just no sight of him. But the time I wasted, I needed to look for a place that I can set down inside of base. I don't know if I have enough iron, but I was really hoping that I did have enough iron to barricade myself enough safely. When setting up base, I don't want to be inside of a place that has a bunch of trees especially when an incubator spawns because it is possible for an incubator to spawn on top of a tree it's not impossible so i traveled around that night i sometimes forget that going on ice like rowing a boat on ice makes you go at sonic speed it's a very fun way to travel it's such a good way to travel but i was in an open field and i used this to my advantage i killed as much mobs as i could that way i can get the xp that i need with all the damage that I was taking though, I had no food. I was forced to use one of my golden apples though because I had absolutely no food. I ran out of food completely. I didn't realize this at all until I saw my hunger bar. I checked my inventory and I just had genuinely nothing but golden apples. And I also almost had a really close encounter with death. Skeleton, man. Get away from me. The neat part about it all is that I got some end of her. I feel like Ender Pearls is definitely a key to success inside of this run. With the amount of sticky situations that I get in, Ender Pearls are a literal blessing. It's now day 21 though, and I see a spot that I think is okay for me to set up base. There are also a few cows around too, thankfully, so I can finally actually have some food. Nice cooked beef. So there's a mod that has security cameras and stuff like that. You can make reinforced blocks, that way they don't break or anything like that security cameras so if i go underground i can see what's happening or if i'm inside of the distance i can see what happening. just really useful stuff and i would like to make security cameras because being on the surface inside of the barricade that i'm gonna make i will die without a doubt i will die so instead i have to bunker underground so what i would like to do is make security cameras but in order to make security cameras you also need a reinforcer and reinforcer is the reason why i need diamonds a lot of diamonds and redstone it's not a lot of material for all of this stuff but it's a it's a decent amount of work that you have to do for well at least a level one reinforcer you don't have to do a lot of work but but for a level two reinforcer that's completely different so i make some fences and these aren't just regular fences these are barbed wire fences so they deal damage and you can't climb over them if you touch them you can kind of get stuck on them you can get off but it like kind of it, it's sticky next thing that i want to do though is make my reinforcer today is a horde night so i want to move as quickly as i possibly can Now, the base that I have, it's really, really small, but I'm hoping that it can hold up with this horde knife. It probably won't be able to, but I'm just gonna hope and see. I dig down so that way I can reinforce the ground around, like the ground that the fences is on, I wanna reinforce that. I wanted to make my camera and my monitor now. The thing is, the horde night is about to start and I have no time to set up this camera. So instead, I'm just gonna have to sit here in a carnage with absolutely no view of what's happening. But I'm gonna quickly reinforce this stuff and hope that no creepers come here because if a creeper gets caught inside my fence, it will explode. And so my horde night begins.
Now, I can't do anything because if I am on the surface, I will die. If I even behind the gate, without a doubt, I will perish. The screams, they never stop. In fact, they just get worse. Very, very risky of me to blindly toss an ender pearl because I could have pearled right into an army. And if I did that, I would have died. Now, the reason why I can die through the gate is because there's a fat fleshling that explodes and releases this liquid that drains your hunger extremely fast and deals an insane amount of damage. And there's another one that can shoot arrows at you. But it's now day 22. I've survived the horde night. I once again need to get as much iron as I possibly can that way I can set up for the next base brand new day means yet another incubator The incubator did upgrade or evolve, so he's infecting land way faster now. Do you see the difference? Isn't that crazy? The dude went up one level and he's already infecting land and releasing things way faster. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know, but it, it seems way faster than what it normally is. Now, what I want to do is look for another village. I did find a broken nether portal and it had a mending war glaive inside of there. It's iron, so it, it doesn't matter. Mending war glaive, but it's iron. I found some kangaroos and I really do want kangaroos because kangaroos, well, they give kangaroo meat and I can make kangaroo burgers and they fill your hunger really, really well. So those are very well needed, but I'm hoping to find another village so that way I can get advanced sharpness. Then I have pretty much all the enchantments that I think I need. It's nighttime though and there's a lot of mobs spawning and I do need to kill these mobs too. That way I can get the XP that I need because we forgot. I still need a megaton of XP in order to apply the protection enchantments that I have. I managed to find the village though, but it's still nighttime, so I can't really do much here with all the villagers asleep. I tried to go inside of a hut and make a villager a librarian, but he just ignored it. I found out usually when this happens, they have their eyes set on another thing that they want to work on or be hired for. I just have no idea what he wants to be hired for. Even if I lock him away, he still will not pick up the lectern and I can't figure it out until well it's daytime yet another incubator has spawned though the sun was rising and it is now day 23. So I kidnap another villager and I put him inside of the hut and I spend God knows how long trading. I spent an eternity just trading. And this guy was making me so angry I had to handle him. Uh, uh, uh. 
I kidnapped yet another villager. This villager I didn't trade with for too long. He gave me advanced sharpness too for 12, but that's gonna take too much time and that's a lot, a lot of books and a lot of XP. Advanced sharpness too. That's a lot of books and a lot of XP that I do not have. So I accidentally let him slip out. That's the only reason why I didn't trade with him for too long. Afterwards, I go into another hut and try to kidnap a villager, but something strange happened. Okay, all right. Yeah, I have no idea how that happened. So while trying to get this guy to give me what I want, yet another incubator has spawned. These incubators, man, they're really annoying. And this one spawned inside of the same spot the last one was in, which is actually a good thing because I'm not searching for a long time, but still, just every single day, sometimes twice in a day. And as you can see, he downgraded because of the amount of times I've killed him and burned land. I think that's the only time inside the entire run I actually managed to downgrade an incubator. I'm not even kidding. Out of all of my time, I think I've only downgraded him once. So I got back inside of the hut and tried to trade with this man. It, I was trading all the way up into day 24. It's brand new day. And I finally get another enchantment. He gave me advanced sharpness three and this time I decided to take it. I was gonna get two advanced sharpness three books and turn it into advanced sharpness four. It's not advanced sharpness five, but it's still something that's infinitely better than nothing. I went back to go get my lava just in case another incubator spawned and then this happened. Ow. Jesus, that did so much damage. I took an insane amount of damage from stepping on something. But after tons of trading with sticks, I've gotten one of the books, but it's really expensive. Since it's 21 cost in order to apply my sharpness into my weapon and only sharpness three, I have to get lots of XP, much, much XP. And the easiest way that I know how to do that, at least in the middle of the day, is by continuing to trade. And day 25, after a bit of trading, I managed to get my second advanced sharpness three book. And now I have advanced then sharpness four and to apply that it's 24 costs i need 24 lives i am cooked this guy won't stop spawning this time he didn't spawn so close to me and he spawned out in the distance i no longer need to do any trading because i have pretty much every enchantment that i need right now so since i have all of the enchantments that i want i need a megaton of exp so much xp in order to apply advanced protection four into my armor it's 18 each and then it's 24 for the weapon but i want to get advanced protection first over the sharpness that way i can secure my safety i found this mine shaft but there was nothing notable inside the mine shaft it was pretty bland name tag right yeah i see i want a pet right because i enjoy having pets but they are a hundred percent gonna die they will not survive no point in having a pet it started getting dark and it was also raining so i could not see anything so after handling a few kangaroos i went to bed for day 26 i found a broken nether portal it had some decent stuff golden apples some gold and golden carrots i need to utilize golden carrots more i just never use it but this day was uneventful i didn't do much besides traveling and staying up all night trying to get as much xp as i possibly can oh right an incubator Okay, where did he spawn? I need to kill him quickly. I need to kill him because I really need to stay up this night and get as much XP as I can. Oh my god, he's already spreading crazy. So 
the area that I stayed in, I actually really, really enjoy this area. Not just because it's a snow biome. But in fact, I hate snow biomes after the snow run that I did, the snow apocalypse. I genuinely hate it. Maybe I'm just fatigued on it. But the reason why I like this is because it's a super open field and many mobs spawn. So I was able to collect quite a bit of XP. Every night I was collecting much XP. So I decided I'm going to stay inside of this area for a while. There was also lava pools here too, which made it really, really useful. Meaning I can just keep using lava over and over if an incubator spawns. But after this night, I finally managed to get my first armor with advanced protection on it. That's one protection for book down. And why did they make a baby snow skeleton throw snowballs? Why, why does he do that? Like, what are you, what are you doing? What's the point? Stop, stop with like, literally, what's the point? I don't even want to kill you, but you deserve to die. Why do you shoot so fast too? Stop. Does that take durability? 228. Okay, no, it doesn't. Okay, you have to go. I don't know why he does that. Because the other regular baby skeleton has a bow and arrow with a sword. But this guy just has snowballs and he just throws them. It's day 27 now and I really didn't do anything for the entire day. I still need a mega ton of EXP and iron, but I feel like it's useful sacrificing a few days to get the XP that I need. Getting that over with as early as I possibly can, I feel like that's more of the play. I also don't want to venture out too far because if I go inside of a place where there's a bunch of trees, there's a possibility he's going to spawn inside of a tree again and I'll never find him. If I'm good enough, I can probably get an enchantment book added to my armor every night. See, look at that. Just like I said, very good spot. I love this place. I love open fields. Nothing can sneak up on me. The night was nearing its end. I managed to get yet another 18 levels but for the armor that I wanted to enchant, it was a bit more expensive because it had one more enchantment on it. I lied. That's even more expensive. Just for my pants because I have one other enchantment on there. So it's day 28 now and there's not much that I can do besides look for regular mobs to take out so I can get the two levels that I need or just wait until it's nighttime. Time to say goodbye. I can't. Where did he spawn just now? Where did he spawn? All the way over there. Ah, oh, shit. He spawned all the way over there for what? I think because I've been killing him quickly, he hasn't been like spreading his stuff fast. Now, I was contemplating if I really do want to risk just trying to get as many levels as I can. And then I decided, you know what? Maybe it's not worth it. I should go get iron instead. I should spend the last of the time that I have to just get iron because I do need to build a bigger base this time. And I also want to have more time to set up the camera and stuff like that. So I made the decision to just leave the area. Now, the new area that I stumbled upon, it was near a big body of water. It also had a really, really deep part where I can underwater mine. There was a nice place for me to mine, and this area led into another area that had a lot of iron, plenty of iron, all the iron that I need. 
advanced protection for on three things now. <gasps> oh my god. Holy shit, that was close. It is now day 30 and I go right back into where I was. But I almost made a big oopsie. I nearly wasted my entire run. I was I was nanoseconds away from losing my entire run. That was an extremely lucky timing. The rare time that I have nice RNG. Once I got what I assumed was enough iron for now, I went back to the surface so I can smelt my iron. I spent the entirety of day 30 just waiting for my iron to be smelted, but my best friend decided to show up yet again. So I'm gonna hope that I'm guessing correctly and he's over here. For some odd reason he can't spawn. Oh, there he goes. Okay, I was right. Thank fuck. The zombie. Stop. Don't do that. Don't touch that. As long as I maintain it like this until Horde Nights, because I won't be able to kill it during Horde Nights. While waiting for my iron to smelt, I just farmed as much XP as I possibly could until sunrise. But I finally did it. All of my armor now have advanced protection for. I would say two nights after the Horde Night, I should be able to easily get um, my sharpness on this weapon. And then we have all enchantments, we're good. We are fully decked out. Not really exactly because I don't have advanced sharpness five, but advanced sharpness four is good enough, I guess. But we now have advanced protection four on the entire armor set. It is now day 31 and I have to start setting up my base now. This base will be bigger than the last base, thankfully. And I'll actually be able to set up my camera since I have enough time to do that, or I assume is enough time. I only need one more enchantment now and that's to go on my twin blade, the advanced sharpness four, but that costs 24 levels. There's one big issue about the flesh mobs. They don't drop XP. I don't know if that's intended or that's a bug, but they do not drop XP. So you Using mending against them is kind of pointless. I've only learned this through, you know, one of my millions of depths. If it is a bug, I hope it's fixed at some point. By day 50, I do want to have a base that's my permanent base, like a base where I cannot move. I just don't want to move. It, moving over and over and over is tiresome. I would like to just have one place that I can settle down and show that I ain't no bitch. Not gonna lie. This is terribly uneven. I wish it was a little bit wider. I don't have, oh, I do, Never mind. okay. Um, I don't know where to set this camera up, and I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm just gonna set it up here, and hopefully that'll be okay. I'm gonna mark that. All right. That is definitely a scary fall. So I can have a certified base where I don't have to run away and I can actually clear all the little flesh and the breaking. 
I think once, uh, I think that once I actually get this sharpness on my thing, I'll actually like go to sleep or whatever. My eyes kind of hurts. Short bunker is good. Let's set up some torches so we can see. That'll be it. Then we'll just have to find a way to escape and get out of here. You know, of all times you decide to spawn, this is probably one of the worst times. And I see him all the way over there too, and I really want to kill him, but I can't. Are you kidding me? Why? Why does he spawn inside of my base? Get out of here. Which one did he just spawn? Oh, come on. Of all things. Sir well, that's not good now, is it? Now he's moving quicker. But, uh, I kind of have to get out of here. I made those burgers. I'll be so glad find another village. Is that one guy spawns up here again. Yeah, I really like to kill him. This is way fun to spawn on my camera. Horde night's over and it's now day 32. I managed to escape by using ender pearls again. Now, I didn't mention this, but if one of my armor breaks, just one single piece of armor, it doesn't matter which one, I will die. I will get two shot. It is guaranteed. How do I know this? Because of the millions of deaths that I had. And when the mobs infect you, it does take durability. I don't know if, like, if that's normal. I don't know if that works normally, but if you're infected with something, even if it's poison, the armor takes durability from that but anyway there was a village on the other side of the mountain like where the horde night happened this village was eh, it was it was pretty mid it wasn't anything going on and honestly i hate these kinds of villages because i always fall into snow or a villager falls into the snow and they just die the village was also just really small there was a broken nether portal but it was under a bunch of gravel i guess it generated weird the chest only had gold and a golden apple that was it i checked my camera because I wanted to see what was going on around my base or the thing that I built. It looks so weird. It's just frozen in place. I guess it's because I got out that chunk. So this day, as usual, incubator spawns. I have a little mini panic attack searching for this incubator. This time I was pretty slow taking out the incubator because I had no idea where he was. Other than that, I just traveled. I also killed some yak. They drop a lot of beef, so that's good. Just traveled till it was dark. I found another broken nether portal, and this broken nether portal actually caught me off guard because it had something a little bit crazy inside of there. What the fuck? 
Oh, I'm taking that. Oh, hell yeah. So the thing about Supreme Sharpness is Supreme Sharpness is impossible to get when you're trading. You can't get it while you're trading. You can only get it if it's applied to a weapon when you are exploring, like inside of a mine shaft or inside of a broken nether portal. If it has it, then it's good because that's a stupidly rare enchantment. Or you can get a book of Supreme Sharpness, which again is super rare, but it's only Supreme Sharpness 1, which is the same amount as like advanced sharpness four. So I spend this night trying to get as much XP as I can. That way I can apply this advanced sharpness on my weapon. It's the only enchantment left and I would really like to get it over with. That way I will feel more confident when I'm fighting against mobs. By mobs, I just mean the flesh that hates. Do it, alligator. I will kill you. Okay, you can do it. Do it. I fucking dare you to. Come on. Walk up to me and die. Uh, idiot. So for day 33, I am now located inside of a desert biome. This is good. This works out for me because I don't know if it's true. I don't know if mobs spawn more inside of deserts or it just feels like they spawn more. But if they do, then that's good because again, I need that XP. It should probably be like what? Two nights, two more nights. I also spotted a sand temple. I barely ever find sand temples. I'm actually kind of afraid of sand temples. I feel like I'm accidentally going to set off the TNT, but there was like one diamond, some iron and gold it was only one diamond but for the night i just stayed up killing as much mobs as i possibly could lots and lots of great xp day 34 for the day i didn't do anything but travel until it was dark it was also raining meaning burning the incubator and the infected land is harder but this will be the last night that i'd spend trying to get as much xp as i can because getting two levels shouldn't be that hard it should be really easy and it was i really hate when it's raining and it's night time because you legit cannot see shit i only need two levels there's a broken nether portal over there one or two more kills should get me up. all right we're done give me off this game okay. see oh never mind it's not raining anymore cool did he blow up my yeah i thought the creeper blew up my enchantment book and my other stuff that fell out my inventory luckily it didn't since i had no reason to stay up anymore i went to bed so for day 35 i discovered clay bombs Clay bombs is something that makes your life 20 times easier inside this game or this mod. It burns a lot of land. I don't know if it deals a lot of damage, but it burns a lot of land. One of the problems though, is that that means you need a lot more iron. Iron is just something you will never get enough of, but I also need gunpowder. So now I need to collect as much iron and as much gunpowder as I possibly can. That means even more sleepless nights. I don't know if it's because of the mods or creepers normally spawn this much, but lots of creepers. In the morning of day 36, I was greeted by some pillagers. I didn't mind killing them because I find cows pretty easily, but I found the village and I was glad that I found the village because I need bread. I want wheat that way I can have a bunch of bread and make kangaroo burgers, but the village had absolutely no wheat. Somehow there's just zero wheat. I also learned that lava does not spread on pus. Like it doesn't overflow it. When I was traveling inside the desert again, I kind of creeped myself out because I saw infected land and I thought I never went this way. I practically ran in a circle somehow. I don't know, but I always need to make sure that I'm killing the mobs that's around the infected land. Because again, if they die by the spikes of the infected land, they become a fleshling. But at the night of day 36, I just lots of creepers. Plenty of creepers. It is now day 37 and I have another incubator to take care of. 
Honestly, I have no idea how many incubators I've killed at this point. I genuinely do not know. But I think I'm doing a pretty well job of taking care of them, you know? Like, patting myself on the back. Found another broken nether portal and it had golden carrots. My inventory was full, so I couldn't pick up the gold block. So instead, I turned the gold block into ingots and I used those ingots and made some more golden apples. Since I've taken care of an incubator today, I don't think another one will spawn. So I feel comfortable going underground around a bunch of land to go get some iron. But the spot that I went into, I didn't think that it would lead me into another spot, but it did. Another spot that had diamonds and iron. I found a mine shaft with the spider spawner. Not really much I can do with that. I mean, like it of course had chests too, but there was nothing in there. Just kind of lame, honestly. <laughs> I was just doing the simple task of collecting as much iron as I can as quickly as I possibly can before another incubator spawns. Something that I do enjoy about Minecraft is being able to use fortune on iron ore. So it gives me a lot more iron iron instead of you know the old way of just picking up iron ore very cool stuff but when i was reaching deep slate he spawned yet again oh i am so deep underground it's not even funny I had to pearl my way back up. And when I reached the surface, I saw that the sun was rising. So it's a new day. It is now day 38, but somehow, some way I got unlucky and he spawned in a tree. So for this day, I find another village and this village had absolutely no wheat, no bread, nothing. But I, I stole the blast furnaces. There was a village near that village and it also had absolutely no bread. But there was a cave next to that village, the newer, newer village that I had found. And I had got iron from there. Once it was getting dark, I got out of the cave and went traveling. I kind of have to find a place that's comfortable to set up base for the next horde night. But I still spent the rest of the night killing as much creepers as I can until he showed up. Oh yeah, that's right. Ever since I've applied Advanced Sharpness 4, I no longer need lava, but it's still good to use lava because it burns the infected land. In the morning of day 39, I took a little boat ride into new land. I wanted to use this day to finally make my clay bombs and the area that I was in looked like it was safe enough to bunker down in. But I also wanted to make my level two reinforcer. Now, the difference between level two and level one reinforcer is that level two can protect or reinforce over a thousand blocks. Reinforcer one can only do like 256. So I spent a good deal of time trying to make this level two reinforcer. All right, there we go. We no longer need this. Though it would be good to keep it, but I can always make another one because I have so many diamonds. It's now nighttime, it's raining, and there's a lake nearby, so it's really easy to get clay. And I finally make my first batch of clay bombs. The only bad part about clay bombs is that you can only hold 14. 14 per stack means it just eats up a lot of inventory space. And I finally made the decision to throw away the diamond scythe. Like, I, I'm not gonna use it. It's cool that it has supreme sharpness, but I, I'm realistically just never gonna use it. An incubator spawn and spawn when it's nighttime and raining worst combination possible. i can't see i don't know where he is this is genuinely hurting my eyes trying to figure out where the fuck this fat fuck spawned i have to just go to sleep i can't see just my luck for this dude to spawn at nighttime when it's thunderstorming he has to be in these trees because there's no possible way i found him in the tree, seriously? Yeah. I have to safely try to get up here. So, 
Careful. Eat. He didn't die, did he? Like, he didn't. Like, there's no way he actually ended up dying, right? I guess he died? How did he die, though? There's no way he fell off. Okay, well, I, I've started a forest fire, so, um, yeah. This isn't good for me. I don't think Smokey would be proud of me at all, but, um, that would have been done. Kind of angry about that, but it is what it is. I was really hoping he didn't spawn inside of a tree, but since he spawned inside of a tree, he actually ended up suffocating himself, I guess by the leaves and these clay bombs prove very very useful which i am very very glad about because they i started a forest fire um look at that very very convenient clay bombs spread fire like crazy so i'm very glad that i discovered these clay bombs now the incubator i think that he just spawned in a tree and he kind of spawned within the leaves and suffocated himself which is cool but uh, kind of wasted time i didn't want to go to bed because i wanted to obviously spend as much time as I possibly can. I have a lot of iron that I need to smelt, but in the middle of the night, the incubator spawned again. So for the rest of the night, I barely saw any endermen. Looting would help out a lot in getting ender pearls and also getting gunpowder. I would like to have looting because it'd make my life easier in getting ender pearls and getting gunpowder. I don't want advanced looting three because advanced looting three would be too overpowered. So I would like advanced looting one at most and at minimum looting two. This is the last enchantment that I can put on my weapon too. After I do that, everything will become too expensive. Oh, 24 levels. 33 cost? Oh my lord. Okay, well, it seems like... Uh, I'm really expensive. <laughs> but it is now day 41 and it's time to set up the new base after this we're gonna have a permanent base or at least try to have a permanent base that way i am stuck inside of the same area and if i want to survive the horde night after that i pretty much have to go back into that same dangerous area and hopefully survive totally nothing will go wrong absolutely nothing i also made another camera that way i can have more of a view so things would be easier to see instead of just depending on one camera i now have two cameras two is better than one another scuffed base but you know what can you do you know what i mean like i don't have a fucking choice considering my luck the next one i should have plenty of time to do whatever it is that i need to do keyword should will i probably not I already know that fat fuck is gonna spawn as soon as the horde night starts too. This doesn't benefit me in any kind of way too because this wastes a lot of stuff. Like every single time I make a base and I just run away from it, it makes me waste a bunch of iron. But the next base will be the permanent base. So I also want my cameras this time too. I do not want to lose my cameras. We're gonna put a camera here. We're gonna put a camera here that off Boom. all right of all time I, I i i knew it i knew it i even said it i literally said it as soon as the horde night starts this fat fuck is gonna spawn and that's exactly what he did. This is gonna be fun escaping. So the best of what I can do is I can kill it and then probably immediately teleport out. It doesn't matter how much protection you have. You can't fight this. If we don't have a lot of iron, I need to run into Goblin Trader. I'm gonna hope that I run into Goblin Trader. I wanna throw a play bomb. I want to, I have to, I have to throw a play bomb. Oh. 
If it gets too hectic, I'll curl out. So after killing the fleshlings that was around my bunker or gate, I wanted to take out the incubator before it evolved. Incubators do have two ways of evolving, which is through the levels that you see and also just evolving if it survives for too long. Once it evolves, it is way harder to take care of. So taking care of it as soon as possible is the best bet. But you also have to remember that the longer that I fight these infected and take damage from them, the more durability that I lose. I can't get any durability back from them because they don't drop any XP. I killed the incubator I still want to get rid of this infected land or as much of this infected land as I can but after doing what I thought was enough I went to go collect my cameras and get out right. of there let's get my cameras I don't really care about my fences right now but I need my cameras I don't want to be here anymore because my armor is really getting low and I need to repair that. After dealing with all of that, my armor took quite a bit of damage. So now I need to stay up a few nights or however many nights in order to repair my armor to get the XP that I need because of mending. While traveling though, I found, I, what is this? Is this a, what kind of temple is it? Is it, just, is it just a regular temple or I don't know. But I found a temple inside the jungle somewhere. There was nothing besides gold and iron and that's it. But for the whole night of day 42, I just stayed up killing as much mobs as I possibly could. I also saw a skeleton that had a bow with three enchantments. I've never seen that before. I don't know if that's rare or not, but that's some insane stuff. What is this bow that this would? Why does the skeleton have this? It may not be amazing enchantments, but three enchantments from a mob is kind of wild. Just from that one night, I managed to repair my entire armor set though, which is cool. In the morning of day 43, I found the village. It was an ugly village, but it was a village nonetheless. And I finally managed to get bread. Incubator spawn, but the bread is more important. <laughs> Now, for the first time, I can have kangaroo burger. There was a hole somewhere inside the village, too. It was a deep cave. And since the incubator just spawned, I should be safe enough to go inside there and collect as much iron as I can. I found some diamonds, too, but I really don't need diamonds. There was a mine shaft, but the mine shaft also had nothing in it. Now, here's the greatest part about me being down in that cave. Goblin trader. Oh, goblin trader. Hello there. Finally. No. I will never not love Goblin Trader. He's such a cool guy, man. I spent the entirety of day 43 in the caves though. When I reached back to the surface, the sun was rising and it is now day 44. Ah! After cleaning up the incubator, I went back to the caves to try to get some more iron, and I almost died. Oh my god, I nearly died. 
I didn't stay down inside the caves for long. I still needed to look for leather so I can make books because I do want to get looting. It's the actual final, final enchantment that I'd ever get. Because again, after that, everything will be too expensive. So after the sun set, I found another village. There was a librarian there, meaning lectern and books. The issue is there was no one inside the village though. So I had to just pick up the stuff and leave and look for another village. So it took me the entirety of day 45 just to find a single village. It's now nighttime of day 45. Surprisingly, I didn't have to keep a villager kidnapped for long because he gave me exactly what I wanted within the same night. Looting three, there we go. I'm gonna lock you in here so you don't go anywhere. Now we just need a fletching table. That's what I would say, but a certain somebody just spawned. And I have to figure out where the fuck he is. It's raining. No way. In the morning of day 46, I went back to the village to see if the guy still wanted to give me looting three. I quickly managed to get all the emerald that I needed in order to get this looting three. And I'm very happy that I spent all that time taking out mobs. It was stupid expensive to add this looting three into my weapon. And now my weapon is too expensive to add any other enchantment. So with the rest of my time of day 46, I spent it trying to mine for iron or look for a place to mine for iron. Goblin Trader, and then I can get out of here. When I reached back to the surface, I saw that the sun was rising, and it is now day 47. Or at least I thought it was rising. It was actually setting. So I, I sat inside that cave for like a day and a half or a night and a half. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea how to put it into words. I, I'm confused. But when I came out, the sun was setting of day 47. An incubator had spawned, but it was too dark to see anything. I have no idea where he was. Eventually, I did see a small red smearing somewhere and found where he spawned. Now, for day 47, I look for a new place for me to be able to set up base. I also want to have my base near a lava pool. That way, it's a lot easier for me to handle a lot of incubators that spawn. But somewhere inside the desert, I saw decent land. I decided I was gonna set up base around here, and there was a lava pool that was nearby. There were some holes inside the land, but you can easily just fill that up. You could just like block that off to make sure that no mobs fall inside of there and be stuck inside of there. So this was gonna be my new base. So I barricade the pits with cobble 
cobblestone and wood and i still need a megaton of iron that reason being because of clay bombs barbed wire really the barbed wire the barbed wire is really really expensive or razor wire now that i think about it barricading the holes with wood is probably not a good idea because of clay bombs yeah i i didn't really think of that but gotta keep it off somehow I need clay bombs to obviously clean up areas and it also helps get the things off my fence so I can actually kill them and whatnot. I also want to make this base to where I can actually fight back instead of just hide underground. It's another thing that I want to do. But at night, I just waited for my iron to be smelted and wanted creepers to spawn. I was also thinking to myself, I'm going to be extremely angry if it started raining on a horde night. But then again, I'm inside of a desert, so I don't think that really matters. The only thing that really matters is that my vision would be bad because of how dark and blurry it'd be. But it's now day 49 and I'm capable of setting up my base. This time, I actually have a nice large area for my base. I pretty much spent the entirety of day 49 setting up my base and getting clay bombs all right i'm gonna need more because i want to like make it three blocks tall melt this and turn this into stone mainly just because i think it looks good no other reason i i, I literally have no other reason the fences they are on sand and i don't want that on sand i'd rather have it on something hard that way if like floor goes away i don't have to worry about the floor falling or whatever I guess razor wires will just have to wait. Razor wires is going to be like the last thing I'm going to make. Because I think that making clay bombs and this other stuff is a lot more important right now. And I said I was going to need a few days to make this stuff. And I was absolutely right. I This is taking a while to just do. I don't mind it being inside the desert. Because, well, uh, it's open field. Meaning if an incubator spawns, I can actually see it from quite far away. And that is what I'm hoping. Incubators that spawn, I can see them real easily. I can like hurry and get to it. Probably end the pearl my way over there, kill it. Throw some clay bombs there. All right, we have enough. Nice. My stuff is three blocks high. Now I want to build a building inside of here too, but it's just like how exactly I'm going to do that. I am not sure yet. I'll make razor wires later. Right now I just need like quite a bit of clay stuff. So creepers can get caught inside the fence. And if they do get caught inside the fence, they just, they don't just die. They explode. Jesus. So for day 50, I killed another incubator and I wanted to keep working on my base. Some of the wood that I said would burn ended up burning and I had to refill the pit with cobblestone. The sand that the fences was sitting on, I wanted something solid to be under there. That way there's no sand falling. And then a mob weasels his way into my base. And I also wanted to reinforce my whole base because reinforced blocks can't get infected. It can't become flesh land. With the spare iron that I had, I wanted to make just a little bit of razor wire and I set it up on random spots around my base so if they hoard around my base they can take a bit of damage and die quicker exactly what I need It is day 51 and I still need to make sure that my base is fine for the horde night. I spent all of my daylight making sure that everything was okay. After assuming everything was okay, I forgot something. I forgot to link my cameras to my monitor. I don't know how I make such a mistake.
I'm actually kind of afraid to get down. That's gonna be fun. Fortnite is over and the incubator actually ended up evolving in both ways in a single night. I have to handle that. Otherwise, things will just get infinitely worse. But this was no easy task for me. It wasn't easy at all. Because this is the first time that I had to deal with an upgraded version of this guy. So I wasn't exactly sure what he was capable of. But I still do need to be mindful of my armor. <laughs> I was not having a good time. The fleshlings, they were infinite. There was no stopping them. It just one after another, one after another, one after another. It genuinely felt never ending. But I get out of the area so that way I can try to repair a piece of my armor. Whatever the lowest HP one was. Once I repaired that armor, I went back into the battlefield. So going in head first, I knew that that wasn't gonna work. So I had to come up with a different plan. Risky plan, but a new plan nonetheless. So the plan was to just build the bridge or tower up and try to build a pathway. That way I can drop lava on him. But I guess being around him for too long, that just causes effects. So I was just gonna bridge my way until I'm directly over him. Then I drop lava on top of him. The lava falls and kills him or will it? He just hate my lava. So this guy is capable of putting out lava and fire. 
I don't know how consistently he can do it, but he can do it. I will just never find out what's the cooldown for that, but I managed to take him out. I try to use as much clay bombs as I can to clean up the infected land because I still have to come back here. But I want to spend this night trying to get as much XP as I can to repair my armor. So that is all I did for the entire night. But day 53, I saw something cool. I found a kangaroo mouse. Very goofy looking fella. I'm gonna name him Sarblaxel. Very goofy little fella. So after using an excessive amount of clay bombs, I once again need iron. I see this pit that goes really deep and I go inside there and collect iron. But I of course can't do that without an incubator spawning. When I got out the cave, I was kind of curious to know how my base looked. It looked terrible. Just fire everywhere, a bunch of infected around, and they're just standing there frozen in time. Kind of creepy to think about. And I have to come back here. But for the night of day 53, I just spent that time getting as much gun out as I can. Look at how goofy it looks. <laughs> There's multiple of them. For a great deal of day 54, I spent it getting iron and killing any creeper that I can find inside of a cave. One thing that I learned is that if I'm in the middle of the ocean and there is no land nearby, the incubator actually cannot spawn. So I can have a calm day. It's possible to have a calm day. I just cannot have any land around. So I spent a great deal of time sort of peacefully underground, getting as much iron and killing as many creepers as I can, actually relaxing for once but my relaxing time came to an end runic tablet did i throw away my torch i did didn't i fuck i gotta get out of here i gotta get out of here i gotta get out of here No way he spawned. Yeah, I knew he didn't spawn underground. There's no possible way he did. to winning um and the pearls and clay bombs yes it took a bit but i managed to make it to the surface and when i did make it to the surface it was day 55 after taking out the incubator and cleaning around the infected land and taking out the enemies i went back into the area that i was in and collected iron but i guess i was once again too close to land few days now I've been trying to see Goblin Trader inside the mines. I was hoping that I can see him inside the mines. And for day 56 I decided this will be my last day trying to get Goblin Trader in the mines. If I don't get him I'll just go back to my base. But sadly I wasn't lucky enough for him to spawn. Instead I had this thing spawn. Let's 
just start heading back there. Eight and a half stacks of iron, which is pretty nice. I would like to assume that's nice. I hope that's enough. So it's day 57 now, and I need to make it back to my base or around my base just close enough so I can smell all this iron that I have and then use that iron and make clay bombs and also razor wire. I was kind of far away from my base, so it took half a day to get back into the area of my base or near my base, I should say. And when I made it back close to my base, an incubator spawned yet again. This guy has consistently been spawning every day. <laughs> After spending the night of day 57 just killing creepers and trying to get gunpowder, in the morning of day 58, I made me a furnace. I want a blast furnace though, because I don't really have that much time until the next horde night. So I would like to smelt this iron as quickly as I possibly can. Goblin trader. Where is he? Goblin trader, let's go. When I was trying to get more stone for blast furnaces, I heard a goblin trader near the surface too. Mm. Holy hell. I've been waiting for you for so long, goblin trader, man. There were some pillagers around too, but hey, goblin trader. <laughs> So I made my first blast furnace. I wanted, I don't even know how many blast furnace I wanted. I just wanted enough that would smell all of my iron at a really rapid pace. I went back to Goblin Trader with the rotten flesh that I had and traded that to get coal. I went back to my blast furnace and made another blast furnace. And then I made a third blast furnace. So at this moment I had three blast furnace and while all of my iron was smelting, I started making the razor wire. That way when I get back to my base, I can just set up up the razor wire around there. Only 25 razor wire from all that iron is insanity. I definitely don't want a raid to happen at my base because if it does, <sighs> that's gonna be really bad for me. What also sucks is the fact that this guy just spawned it yet again and I have to find out where. There he goes. <laughs> You're in the middle of uh, infected land. There's a problem. I don't have my lava bucket. What, what happened to my lava bucket? My bucket is gone. What? Well, that's fun. I have to make another bucket. I actually have no idea what happened to my bucket. It's just gone. Well, I say accidentally threw it out, but I don't remember where exactly I would have done that at. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to make another bucket. It's, it's great. I don't know how my bucket just disappears like that. So I didn't realize, but a long time ago when I was looking back at my footage, I was trying to figure out where did my lava bucket go? And I threw away my lava bucket accidentally when I was trying to throw away the golden pants that was inside my inventory. I made me yet another blast furnace and I I had seven blocks of iron left to smelt. I had eight and a half stacks of iron and I was all practically gone for nearly a stack of razor wire and a bunch of clay bombs, sorta worth it. So on the morning of day 59, I made some clay bombs. I only had, I think one stack of iron left and I saw some of the infected lurking around. <laughs> I didn't know at the time, but this little cube with the claws on it, or at least I think it's claws, that actually spawns fleshlings. But I nearly used the last of my iron to make some more razor wire. I had a tiny bit of iron left over. After killing the incubator that spawned, ran towards my base. We're approaching a horde night, and I think I'm prepared for this horde night, but there is still a lot, a lot of infected lurking around. I didn't even take that into accountability, did I? I'm gonna need a whole new anvil. Before 
before going inside of my base, I tried to make it a little bit more clean, like have less mobs around. But I was I was having kind of a hard time doing that. like level 42 or some shit yeah not anymore so after struggling for a while i kind of just gave up on cleaning my armor was damn near half durability gone thankfully i had a lot of levels i really i legit look like a grief to minecraft server like it's bad but i thought maybe i can clean it up this time maybe maybe there's less around I do better this time everything right now, man. Why is there even so many phantoms anyway? that I was not gonna have a good time the second time and I did not take out all the mobs or a big chunk of the mobs. The sun was rising and I wanted to sleep so I can get rid of the rain. It's now day 60 and I need to make it out of my base because I have to repair my armor. There's no way I'm gonna survive a horde night if my armor is damn near broken. Remember, I can't have one piece to break because if one of them do, I'm dead. So I have to make it out of my base and try to gain XP. An incubator spawned near my base though and I have to take that out, but I have no clue where he spawned. This 
is why I'm very glad that I have cameras. He's all the way over there. Are you kidding me? Let's do this. Safely. Managed to get him in time before he had upgraded or evolved. I'm gonna finish putting out my wires around this. And then when I do, I am gonna get out of here because my armor is about to break and I really can't have that happening. If it does, I'm dead. I think for here, I'm just gonna have to have it like every other block because um, I'm running out. Now that I was done setting up the barbed wire on top of my fences and it was nighttime, I was ready to go out into a clean field. That way I can get regular mobs and get XP. But I almost had something happen to me. I nearly died. <laughs> that was crazy. Let's let's farm up. We have to farm up bad. I can't believe I nearly ended pearl to my death like that. I had genuinely the unluckiest pearl of my entire life. That was so bad. I literally stopped breathing when that happened. It was like they knew exactly where I was gonna pearl and they were just waiting for me. Plotting, scheming, insane stuff. But the area that I usually go to in order to farm EXP, there was a lot of infected around hindering the whole point in me going out. But I did what I could nonetheless, killing as much mobs as I possibly can. Getting the EXP that I need in order to repair my armor fully seems like a dream though. If Goblin Trader is still there, I might be able to be saved. Yeah, I was just hoping too much. So I was hoping that Goblin Trader would show up and surprisingly, he did. Goblin trader, where are you? Yes. Come here. You're a fresh one. <laughs> Let's go. Holy shit. All I need is my helmet repaired. I wish you wanted copper. There's so much copper around. I think that Goblin Trader is genuinely one of the best things inside of every run that I do. All I need now is just to have my helmet repaired and then we're fully repaired and we're ready. Might be slightly difficult with all the infected that's around in the incubators that keep spawning, but near full is better than not full at all. lucky because I ran into Goblin Trader. If I did not run into him, probably would have died. So after killing the incubator, I wanted to make another shield. After making my shield, it was time to head back to my base. I wanted to get clay for clay bombs, but I just didn't have any time. I made it back to my base and I wanted to reinforce like, like I wanted to make the wall deeper. I was just gonna build this like crazy underground bunker, but I can't reinforce the sand because it's not vanilla blocks. I can't reinforce this. Ah, oh boy. This is bad. I can't reinforce it because it's not vanilla thing. So that means I'm going to have to replace all of this with vanilla blocks, meaning this just got like 20 times harder. You 
you be climbing. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is just, you know, build up. Because why not, you know? I hate you. I, I truly hate you. The fact that you can just break blocks, it, that, that doesn't bother me or anything. It doesn't at all. So, now, what I want to do is make some, uh, whatever it's called, TNT. I can only make 16 right now, which is, oh. Hey, guess what? I can't use this TNT because I don't have flint and steel. I'm an idiot. Oh, that's not good. They're breaking my stuff. I'm gonna have to use clay bombs. They get in there. It's gonna be really, really bad. They're breaking my blocks like crazy right now. doing is breaking the fucking blocks under the fence, even though that's not supposed to be possible because it's reinforced blocks. But, you know, this guy, he gives no fucks. He does what he wants. And there's no point in using TNT on my base. It's a real bridge. Oh, he fell into the lava pool over there. That's what I should do. I should make like pits of lava. Cause you know what that requires? A lot of time. And with how much there is on the outside, I don't think I can do that. I really wish I was allowed to use bow and arrows because this picked my life a lot easier. I'm probably gonna have to abandon and relocate. It's it's a little it's way too dangerous here. I'm gonna need more than a few stacks of iron. But the good thing is I won't need like uh I won't need like enchantments or anything like that. I do want my cameras, however. Uh I have pretty much everything that I need. It's just I'm gonna need a bunch of iron. Like so much iron it's not even funny. Like I wanna have a permanent base. Like this is really cool. This is it's really nice. But it's way too dangerous. Okay, I think I have everything I want. There's nothing else in here that I want. I'm afraid of them breaking that down. Yeah, it's really time for me to skedaddle. Fuck an anvil, I don't need that. I think I would want a chest full of clay bombs, but the amount of iron that I need, I don't even think like 10 stacks can work. We're gonna need a lot. But uh, I need to bounce. I wanted to have a permanent base, but it, they're taking over. They're winning. Y'all can have this area. I'm, I'm sorry. Is there anywhere I can pearl that's safe? I think in the back is the safest place that I can go. Yeah, you just started a crazy war with me, buddy. Okay. I remember that. He just reached his max level. That's fun. Scandal. What the fuck am I? Okay, so I thought he reached his max level, but I was lying to myself. He didn't reach his max level. I honestly don't even know what his max level is. I never found out. I just kept assuming he's going to keep upgrading and getting stronger and stronger and stronger like he's Goku or something. But I've survived another horde night. And now I must relocate because it is way too dangerous to stay there. So I want to look for another place to set up base. But I also, once again, need a megaton of iron. A megaton of iron, clay, just everything. I have to restock on all of that stuff. But getting that stuff shouldn't be too difficult. I know how to prevent the incubator from spawning now. So I just have to find the area to be able to do that. Another incubator spawned, but I have absolutely no idea where he spawned. But for day 62, I really just tried looking for a place to mine. I did make some more clay bombs, however. Looking for a place to mine inside the ocean 
is a really, really difficult thing to do. It was raining plus nighttime, you know, not exactly a fun combination. I found the area that I assumed was big enough to mine, but it was really, really small. There was some mobs down there, clean up the mobs, pick up a little bit of iron and then I get out of there. And now it's day 63. When I was trying to turn my diamond into diamond blocks to get more space, I'm not going to get it spawn, but it's still raining. I found the village and I'm glad I found this village because I was running low on kangaroo burgers. This village had a lot of wheat, so that means a lot of kangaroo burgers. Pretty much got nearly a stack of kangaroo burgers again, so I don't have to worry about that for a while. I couldn't really find any good spot to get iron. There was no super big body of water. So for day 63, I spent it just trying my best to get iron or look for a place to get iron. Safe to say that I did a terrible job, but when the sun was about to rise, I found the pillager tower and another incubator spot. It is day 64 now, and I once again tried looking for a place that I can get a lot of iron. I thought I got lucky and found the biome that I once spawned in, but it wasn't exactly the biome that I spawned in. It kind of was, but it was really small and there was no iron. There was very little iron. When I collected the little iron there was, I continued my search looking for a place to collect even more iron. I found the village. They had a lot of apples. I turned those apples into golden apples or as many many apples as I could turn into golden apples and when I was about to leave the village to you know continue my travels an incubator spawned I didn't feel like cleaning this up properly, so I just left it. Probably not a good idea, but I was not feeling it. And when I went across the water, there was another village there, but it was nothing special. And I didn't have time to explore that village anyway, or properly explore the village. It's day 65 and I'm still struggling to find a place to mine, but I find another village, which again, had absolutely nothing. But after a long time, I finally did it. I finally managed to find a big enough body of water and collect iron out of it. The only time that I had to really come out of the water is when I had to check if it was a new day. And inside of day 66, I had an oopsie happen. He blew up my fucking crafting table. A creeper blew up my crafting table, meaning I can't turn the iron ore into iron blocks, which means inventory space. I don't have any of that. But I knew there was a boat nearby, but I was afraid of going onto the boat, thinking whether or not the incubator can spawn on top of that one block of land. And if he does that, he's gonna infect the entire ocean, which is not good at all. So instead, I looked for an abandoned ship that was underwater that had nothing sticking up the top. That's a white whale. Those things are stupid rare. You don't usually find those. It's crazy. This is my first time ever seeing a white whale. So I want to spend one more day mining inside of this area. I think one more day would be safe and then I can search for a new place to set up because it can take multiple days in order to find an area that I want to set up. Also it can take a while to smell iron. Problem traders here. Waiting. Mm. 
While inside of the mines, I find out that it is now day 67 and I want to use this whole day and still collect iron that I'm still safely inside of the deep cold ocean. I found a zombie spawner, but nothing crazy there. Diamond force armor, I guess. Once I felt like I had enough, I started digging up to the top and when I got to the surface, the sun was rising. It's now day 68. I have to quickly find a place that I can set up base. My relaxing days of collecting iron with nothing to worry about is over. I have no idea where my boat is. But when I got out of the water, I I somehow lost my boat. I don't know where it went, so I had to make another one. My old trusty boat was just completely... I wonder if I've had that same boat since the beginning, or is that a new boat? Honestly, can't recall. No, they can't be the same boat because it's a completely different color. I don't know. I quickly make it to land, and when I made it to land, there was a pillager tower. I thought, why not free this iron golem and take out these pillagers? I, I honestly don't know why I did that. I'm gonna be on. I don't know why. It was a waste of time. I knew I was low on time, but I did this anyway. Dog, oh, they're so mad. Holy. Jesus, I have so many arrows. <laughs> Thanks, Iron Golem. I had to free him real quick. Free my boy. Another incubator spawned, but I have no idea where he spawned. So yet another incubator that I just cannot take out. So I continue my travels looking for an area where I can set up base. But in the middle of the night, I found a broken nether portal with something actually special in it. Enchanted golden apple? Give me that. Dog, how rare is that? So I've never found an enchanted golden apple before. I've never once found that. In fact, I don't think I've ever found an enchanted golden apple, period, in playing Minecraft. Modded or unmodded, I don't think I've ever found one. I kept traveling through the night, it was raining, and I couldn't see anything, and it was really, really annoying me. So I decided I was sleep to get rid of this rain. It's now day 69, and after traveling for a bit, I finally found a place where I think it's okay. It's kind of similar to the place where I did my spore run, except there's an actual full village nearby. But I like this area, nice and open. So I sat down my furnaces and start smelting stuff, but the incubator spawned again. He's back. It's another sleepless night of trying to make fences and set up a proper base. I want to have this base similar to the last one, a, a pretty sizable base, but it started raining again. It was really annoying me with the rain and not being able to see the creepers that was showing up. So instead of just staying up this night, I decided I'll sleep instead. Day 70, I just kept making my base. I think it's smaller than the last base that I did, but it's still a pretty big base. Another incubator wanted to say hi to me though. I never mentioned, but incubators can heal themselves if you don't deal enough damage or deal damage quick enough. I was too lazy to get coal or use my own coal to get torches. So instead I went to the village and just stole torches from there. It works and I don't really care about this village. I don't need it. There's no point in worrying about mobs spawning in there, but I managed to fully complete the fence setup. And so for the rest of the night, I just try to get as much gunpowder as I can. Gunpowder and ender pearls. The sun was rising. It's now day. 71 and I was greeted by an incubator. This time he spawned all the way up top the mountain. I knew you were gonna spawn up here eventually. I was just waiting for it. We really need lava. I'm hoping there's a 
lava pool. There's a lava pool like all the way over there. Since the mobs are now capable of climbing, I put razor wire on my fence. That way they climb, they get stuck. They're like slowed even more and they're also taking a lot more damage. Tonight will be a horde night though. So I have to make sure everything is prepared. I still had time to grab a bit of clay and I reinforced the ground around my base so it can't get infected. But the horde night has begun. Ugh, Damn, they started in the village. That's crazy. I forgot to set up my camera. Hold up. Why is he doing that? Oh, he stopped. Okay. Since I forgot to set up my cameras and I did it before the mobs came in, I was kind of afraid to get down for them. But I was up there, an incubator had spawned. But the amount of mobs that's around, really difficult to take him out. Why? How? How did you get up? Okay. So I didn't expect them to do this much damage to my base. Even the reinforced land still got somehow transformed and infected. They've never done this before to my gate either. So I have to make new fences. I'm not going to be there. So much guarding that guy. I don't think I'm going to be able to kill him. Walking out my base to take him out will not work. So I have to improvise and build from my base. But when I was doing that and I was bridging my way towards him, it started raining, meaning clay bombs will not work. Why? Why? You're lucky. You are so lucky. I'm just going to sleep. It's just going to make it even more complicated for me. Oh, come on. Like, I could not have been any, like, more unfortunate because the time that I was about to just absolutely bombard this dude, it just starts raining. I can't believe I really have to waste my day like this. This is insane. So as soon as I was able to sleep, I went to bed and then I continued bridging my way towards him. This guy has infected a lot of land. All this land within a day. How is this guy still alive? There we go. Perfect. Let's clean the rest of this up. Why is he doing that? Oh, he stopped again. Every single time I call him out on it, he just stops. Oh, no, the other one's doing it. I want to repair my armor and I also want to restock on clay bombs. What the? Why? Why is he, why is he going all the way up there? Why did he do that just now? Okay, well, I really need to get out of here, so. All right. I'm gonna go this way. That guy has to die, but I really need to kill that sucker first. Come on, we can do it.
While traveling at night, I found the village that was near my base. The village didn't have anything. There was a broken nether portal too. The portal also didn't have anything. So I kept traveling, looking for a place to mine, and I found another village. I, I have found so many villages, but at this village, an incubator had spawned. Once I was done around there, I went back to the water, and I actually found a place to mine. It was once again in a really big body of water, so I don't have to worry about the incubator spawning. I spent the rest of day 74 underwater getting iron and i spent a little bit of day 75 getting iron too once i was done getting iron i went to land it was thunderstorming though but it's okay because i still got daylight however i almost lost everything to a creeper i was so scared i couldn't even speak there i managed to make a nice amount of clay bombs for the day I hope I didn't throw that. I threw that way too far. Oh, never mind. I'm good. And it is now day 76. I find another area to mine in. And the reason why I want iron now is different. I have a new idea inside of my head. I'm going to make a bunch of lava falls around my base. Now, I never mentioned, but I cannot have lava touch the razor wire or the fences. Otherwise, they will melt. They will literally disappear. But that's not going to stop me from making the lava falls around my base. And with the lava falls, the horde can probably run into some of the lava and the incubator can possibly spawn right under a lava fall will it work probably not but it's good to try anyway it was just a random idea that i came up with and it's just as ugly as i had it in my head trust me it is very ugly after making my buckets and clay bombs i started heading towards my base again I was traveling on water all the way until the next day and it's day 77. Somewhere inside of day 77, I made it back near my base. And that's when I witnessed the climbing actually happening. Those mobs climb pretty fast, faster than me. Meaning if we were to run up a hill, they would catch me. But I had to fight my way back into my base because there was still a big horde around or a medium sized horde. Around. Now I could have went to go get the lava after putting things inside my chest, but I wanted to wait until the next day so I can know that it's safe. After messing with the fleshlings in the morning of day 78, I went out to try and get the lava, but an incubator had spawned. After taking out the incubator and cleaning up around the area of the infected land, or cleaning up the infected land, I went to go get the lava from that lava pool. Now all I need is some dirt, that way I can build this passage or this, uh, I don't even know what to call it. But for now, I'll call it art to build this amazing masterpiece. It's beautiful. It's not beautiful. It's really ugly. With just the cope, I'm going to call it beautiful. So after picking up the dirt, I make it back inside of my base. But someone else likes my base too. <laughs> I wanted to do this in the morning where I set up this whole lava fall thing. And so right at the morning of day 79, I start building.
So as I said before, this did not look better in my head. It looked exactly like this. Pure chaotic destruction. After setting up my lava, I needed to get out of the area that way an incubator can spawn away from where my base is. I also needed some more lava. After collecting the lava, I made sure to collect some more dirt too. In the morning of day 80, I collect some more dirt, kill a yak or two, and then make it back inside my base. Now what I want to do is expand this lava fall thingy even more. I want more lava around. Well, lava around means more of a chance that the incubator can spawn inside that lava fall. For the rest of the day 80, I kind of just waited until it was nighttime to go to bed. For day 81, I wanted to get wood. That way I can extend my chest and have more space for all these buckets of lava. I went to refill the remaining buckets that I had and I accidentally burned away some buckets. Ah, uh, that was bad. I just burned buckets. After collecting my logs and trying to go back to the base, an incubator had showed up again. All right, after this horde night, I do want to go out and get more iron and make some more like barbed wire or whatever, or razor wire. After cleaning up there, I went back to my base and I just wanted to see if my little structure here actually worked. There was a flesh community and I was very curious to know how much damage he deals. The flesh community deals even more damage depending on the level of the incubator. I am very glad I did not touch him. I'll show why the flesh community is very, very dangerous later. I guess he's actually just that much stronger. I'm actually curious to know if he deals a bunch of damage to me. Am I gonna just let him hit me? No. So after expanding my chest and putting my lava inside of there, I just waited for the horde night to happen. They somehow managed to break my fence and make it into my base. While I was down there, I probably would have died. I can't tell if he's on the fence or if he's in my base. He is in my base. Okay. You gotta go, buddy. Well, it seems like we have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of repairing to do. I didn't think they would be able to do this, but... Luckily, this night, though, Incubator didn't spawn. Instead, he spawned in the morning of day 82. Of course he's on the mountain. The one place I don't want him to spawn, he spawns. What? Try to be quick about it. Did I ever pick up those other clay bombs? I didn't. It sucks, but okay. Of course not. I'm gonna have to just teleport there. I don't have a choice. What the fuck?
Holy shit. Holy. Oh. Okay. Not it. That was really close. I tried to end a pearl inside and that just didn't work. Okay. I'm totally not shaking right now. Holy. Yet another close call. Almost lost all of my progress just like that. So I once again need to get iron. Usually for these days, like after horde nights, I just have to use my days to restock as much as I possibly can. Nothing wrong with that, but it is tedious work because I am never inside of a comfortable spot. I'm, I just never have enough. So for day 82, I just traveled the whole day and it started raining as the sun was rising. But in the morning of day 83, I finally found no, something okay. that I was looking for the entire game, the biome that I spawned in. I have found it and he spawns. I really hope he's not in the tree right now. Come on, don't do this. I just found the biome that I've been looking for all my life. This is bad. Where the fuck did this guy spawn? Found him. Care of an incubator spawns, but that biome that is what I do. Now, this is perfect, it's not safe from incubator spawning, but this is the best place to get iron. The number one place to get iron, there's just so much iron around, it's lovely. Look at all this iron. Look at this. I, I love this biome, this is amazing. Like, I've always wanted to be here with a fortune pickaxe. Starting off with the world like this <clears throat> and then finding it again later. Very, very nice. I do need to stay up some nights though to repair armor, but I think that I can easily repair armor through XP that I get from smelting. I really need to stay up some nights too to get more into pearls. I'm gonna need gunpowder too. So for the next few nights, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to collect as much iron as I can. I don't know how much iron is safe to leave, but I'll just collect as much iron as I need until it's time to go back to my base. It's now nighttime and I set up a furnace because I once again didn't bring any blast furnace with me for actually no I know exactly why I didn't bring one. I couldn't even go back inside my base. So I needed to make some. I make two blast furnace and I have my iron smelting inside of there while I collect even more iron all the way up until sunrise. It is now day 85 and I am still collecting iron. I made another blast furnace and I started making some razor wire. I didn't make a lot of razor wire, but it was enough for now at least. And I started turning the iron ingots into iron blocks. That way I can have more space to collect even more iron. I kept collecting some until it was day 86. What is happening over there?
For the rest of the daytime I had inside of day 86, I just waited for my iron to be smelted. I felt like I had enough iron now. It was really, really stacked on iron. I did end up making like a stack of razor wire too, but I still have a lot of iron left over. Once all of my iron was smelted, I was ready to leave. I saw a village out in the distance. The village didn't have anything but there was a broken nether portal under the village it was like rendered weirdly it was one of those kinds of villages and this broken nether portal had yet another enchanted golden apple the fact that i found yet another enchanted golden apple before i found a rare weapon is actually pretty insane I don't think I've ever used an enchanted golden apple that I had because I was too afraid to use it. Like, what if I wasted? But I stayed inside of this little area that I had found waiting for creepers to spawn so I can get some gunpowder. That way I can make a lot more clay bombs. I barely got any creepers. I got a few, but I need a lot more, man. As the sun was rising into day 87, an incubator showed up again. restocked on some clay bombs since I was able to get the clay that I needed. But where I stopped was inside of this icy mountain biome and they have these weird creatures. I don't know what they're called, but I saw a long time ago that you can make a helmet with them. What, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? Okay. Are y'all, are you dumb? What are you doing? And if you make the helmet with them, they follow you okay. instead of attack you. It's not useful at all. It is very useless. Can make this helmet. Wait, I'll die if I use that because I don't have advanced protection on it. Never mind. I want to test it though. Now the reason why it's useless is because yeah, they follow you, but they don't attack anything. They will just look at it unless they attack them. Like if the skeleton were to shoot the creature, then they would attack. But if they're attacking me, that doesn't matter. They will just stare at them. Cool. <laughs> what is this? Very useless. Even if I were to hit the skeleton, it still will not attack him. Are you gonna kill this guy or what? Come on, hit this guy. He's literally attacking me. What are you doing? I guess I y'all just not gonna attack this guy. Okay, cool. Now for this night, I didn't only need creepers. I needed endermen real bad too. I was low on pearls. I managed to get pearls safely, but I still was barely seeing any creepers. And an incubator showed up. Yet another night that I have stayed up. It is now day 80 and I have to start making it back to my base because I am quite far from my base. So it's going to be a while to get back there. Hold on, my camera on me. On my monitor, I should say. That's nice. I wanted to check my surroundings around the base. Before going though, I made sure to get some more clay and then make as much clay bombs as I can possibly make. I used a nice chunk of iron doing this, but that's okay. It's all worth it. I spent pretty much all of day 88 going back home. I picked up a little bit more iron on the way like i visited that biome again got some iron there and while i was traveling incubator spawn take out incubator <laughs> I make it back inside of my area in the morning of day 89. When I made it back to land, I made sure to get some more dirt just in case I have to bridge again. But I set up my blast furnace in another area so I can smelt the iron that I had got. I waited patiently for my iron to be smelted. And then once it was dark, I went to bed. It is now day 90. And for day 90, the village that I was at, I picked up the wheat and then made some more kangaroo burgers because I was kind of sort of running low, but not really. But after I was done, making my burgers incubator hats now during the day i don't really have anything else to do so i kind of just run around and wait for nightfall that way i can get the gunpowder that i need and for the night i just take out creepers It's 
It's day 91 now. You know, I feel confident. I feel I feel prepared. I have everything that I need here. I have all of the I have enchanted apple. I have golden apples. I have all the clay bombs. I, I like I'm, I'm, I'm ready, but it rains. So now it just makes my clay bombs useless, but yeah, I should still be fine. Look at that. I got a one shot him? Why can I one shot him? <laughs> Fuck, I can't move. Once again, I had to fight my way into my base. It wasn't too much of a fight, but I almost got touched by the flesh community. At this time, I still don't know how much damage he deals, but the amount of times I've died from him touching me one time, I didn't want to risk it. I made some more fences that way I can patch the missing fences that I had. And since I had a lot of barbed wire, well, it, it's razor wire. I put some more razor wire on my fence. That way, even more damage and making it kind of impossible to climb over that fence. He spawned up there again. Come on, I can't see. I need to see where he spawned. While I'm up here, I'm gonna try to repair things. 16 levels for that, really? Luckily, it stopped raining. 32 to repair my pants. Okay. Yeah, sure, man. I don't see that spreading over there, so I don't think he spawned there. Maybe he spawned over there, like right in my lava. Would it be pretty cool if he did? But I don't see 
anywhere else he could have spawned. I don't, I don't see anything. So the confidence that I once had kind of just disappeared. And the reason why I folded and started building up is because they somehow managed to break the reinforced blocks that's under the fence, meaning they could probably slip into there and, you know, kill me. I'm a little bit too far into this to just allow myself to roll over and die like that. All right, well, I, I'm assuming he spawned like inside one of my lava puddles, which if he did, that really benefits me. However, if he's above that mountain, that's really bad for me. All the way to find out is to build even higher. Did I really get lucky? Did he really spawn in one of my lava pools? My, my map world, whatever, just looks like a grief to Minecraft server. This is crazy. This looks ugly. It's actually kind of beautiful if you really look at it, though. All right. Uh, I think I want to get out of here. Day 92, I tried cleaning up a little bit around the base, but the incubator has upgraded yet again. You're telling me he still has room to upgrade? He upgraded again? Well, things seems to have gotten a lot harder for me, huh? Usually when the incubator gets upgraded, that means everything else gets upgraded. The flush community can probably one-shot me now, too. I think I need to pour more lava around here. Let me do that. Now, the reason why I want to put more lava is because there is a really, really big horde over here. And I don't like that. Oh my god, I just set myself on fire. That was really cool. That's not good. So very rarely glitches happen to me, and there was a time that a very, very bad glitch happened to me. A horde night started again a day after a horde night. A very quick thinking by me i nearly bit the dust so because of the glitch it made things a lot harder for me to go out and restock repair my armor and all that stuff it makes things harder but not impossible but i'm surrounded by the infected right now and i can't sleep so i have to wait until it's safe enough for me to do that In the morning of day 93, there was another flesh community day. Let's try to get out of here. After taking out the flesh community, I ate a golden apple and ran out. Can't be too safe. In 
Okay, so we're day 93. Nothing really happened, but I'm going out and I'm hoping I can get a bunch of creepers and endermen because I need a lot of ender pearls. I don't need that many ender pearls, but I honestly don't know when I'm supposed to eat a enchanted golden apple. Maybe if I'm on one HP, but I feel like I'll choke and end up eating the apple too late or something like that. So what I need is gunpowder. I need gunpowder and clay. I don't need that many ender pearls. I found the village, but the village isn't useful at all. I don't, I don't have any use for it, but an incubator spawned inside the village right next to me. I needed lava because I had no lava. I don't have any bucket. Oh. Okay. Well, never mind. I guess I do have lava. <laughs> so this night I realized that at night it seemed a little bit brighter or brighter to me. I don't know if it's because of the hurricane that I had that just messed up my settings since it abruptly turned off everything but i set it back to what i thought it was and so now it's darker so i spent the whole night of day 93 getting as many creepers as i can and i got quite a bit of creepers in the morning of day 94 i saw another pink sheep Oh, pink sheep. Very rare. Two pink sheeps in one run. Kind of crazy, don't you think? Now, I saw this thing. I don't know what it's exactly called, but it had some iron in it. And to be honest, I don't even really need iron like that, considering I have like 40 blocks. So there's no point in being down there. So I killed the only creeper that I spotted and just got out of there. I think I have enough gunpowder now, and all I need is clay. When I was trying to look for a lake so I can get all the clay that I need, another incubator has spawned. I don't know how many, I, I genuinely wonder how many incubators I have killed within this one run. Surely it's been a lot, right? Like I've been doing a pretty good job of maintaining the world here. For once, I'm actually doing good at my goal. What the? Spawned that many? No. But after successfully cleaning up all the infected land and taking out the infected, I started collecting clay. And now that I've collected this clay, I'm able to make all these clay bombs. Now I may feel like I have enough gunpowder, but I just want to be safe. So for the night of day 94, I continued killing creepers and I was getting a lot of creepers. I was killing creepers until it was sunrise and now it's day 95. And then a the morning of day 95, I made me a load of clay bombs, but I still had a lot of gunpowder and iron left over. So I had to get some more clay because I ran out of clay. After getting that clay, i made me another huge batch of clay bombs. I pretty much used all of the iron that I've collected and just turned that into clay bombs. There's only one more horde night that I have to survive here. I have to make sure that I am very well prepared and there is no mistakes. But since I still have a lot of time until the horde night, I might as well restock the iron. He's already spawning things. <laughs> I don't like this. This is too fast. And this is making me use my clay bombs. So we really do have to go to the ocean and get as much iron as we can get. Like I want my inventory full of clay bombs. I stayed up for day 95 too. I even made some doors so I can do underwater mining, but I genuinely couldn't find anywhere. So instead I spent the night killing creepers and it started raining. I, I really don't feel like dealing with the rain. So I just went to bed to get rid of that. And the morning of day 96, I make me a bit more clay bombs. Now for this day, I searched for an egregious amount of time looking for a place to mine. Just a really exhausting day of searching. I was searching even until it was dark. But when it was getting dark, an incubator had spawned. God, man. This stuff actually spreads so fast now it's not even funny. 
after taking out the incubator, I took back to the waters. I found a place that's really good for mining. And I once again forgot to bring a furnace, so I have to make another blast furnace. But to prevent incubators from spawning, I'm going to do all of this underwater. So I was waiting for my iron to smelt up until the morning of day 97. Even inside of day 97 or a bit of day 97, I was still waiting for my iron to smelt. After my iron was done smelting, I picked up my stuff and got out of there. I somehow ended up inside the area that I was in before where I nearly lost all of my iron to a creeper. So I knew that I was pretty close to my base. But this area also has some clay around it too, meaning easy clay bombs. Of course, another incubator spawns. Move, move it, move it. Where are you? That was the craziest pearl I've ever had. Holy, that was a actually like, that was Kobe right there. What the fuck? Take that out, clean up around there, and then continue getting clay and stuff to make my clay bombs until it was dark enough for me to sleep. It's day 98 now, and all the restocking, repairing armor, all of that stuff is over. I have everything that I want. I feel like I am a very well-prepared man. And since I'm so prepared for this day, I have nothing to do. I just wait until nightfall because I want the war to start already. So I just mess around and then went to bed. It's day 99 now, and I want an incubator to spawn that way when I go back to my base and the horde night starts and incubator doesn't spawn. Once the incubator spawned and I took him out, I went on my way back to my base. I've successfully made it back into my base. And now the only thing that I can do is wait for the final horde night. I almost threw away that shovel. I'm glad I did it. That shovel is pretty much iconic. I've had it since the beginning. Never thought I'd see the day where I have a full fence of whatever this stuff is called. Razor white. Neat. Are you having fun, man? You're stuck. You're, like, there's no way you can go. Getting in my base. How are they up 
I don't want to, like, I have to kill them somehow. I'm just confused on how the fuck they spawned up How are they getting in my base? How are they just doing that? There's a hole. They created a hole. They're also just climbing over my fence too. Which doesn't make them any better for me. I shouldn't even be able to do that. No, he died. Look at him. Look at him. Just walking. He's just walking in my fire. Can you fucking die? Like I, he's still walking around in fire. It just doesn't. How much HP do you have? Just like immune to fire or something now? Like, are you just not about it? I'm not gonna get out of here until you burn. Finally, he died. But where's the fat one? He's still alive! Well, I made it to day 100. I almost lost it, but I made it to the end. This is a really, really, really long journey. I barely slept both in game and in real life. I'm glad that I did it though. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you didn't, take your anger out on the like button and sub button. I already know what I'm going to be doing next. I'll see you next time. Look at that. Number of deaths. Zero. There goes the flesh community. I have full advanced protection core on.